Next question is from Lean H17. Is chronic stress a strong enough of a component to keep someone from achieving their fitness goals? Ooh, good question. Yeah, okay, let's let's kind of let's break that down for a second. Is something that has been proven to dramatically increase uh, inflammatory markers or inflammation to increase all cause mortality, increase risk of heart disease, cancer, insulin uh, issues like uh, sensitivity issues, diabetes. Uh, raises cortisol, lowers testosterone, causes hormone imbalances in women. Could that possibly affect your <laughs> results in games? Well, when you, fra when you frame it like that, of course. Well, that's why yeah. I did that because- I know, but it's like someone asking, like, if you drive 100 miles an hour, are, 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 are you really likely to die? And it's like, well, when you say it like- Way well, more likely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then if you frame it like, well, if you're driving like an asshole with your eyes closed at 100 miles no, an hour no. on rainy <laughs> roads, like, yeah, you're Well, probably look, it, it, the bottom line is that, that exercise is stress on your body. And if you're already high stress, throwing more stress at your body, now you're not going to respond whatsoever. And your body does some interesting things when it's under a lot of stress. When it's under a lot of stress, it is trying to survive and protect itself. So what does it do? It raises cortisol. What's so bad about cortisol? Nothing is bad about cortisol. You need it. But when it's, this is what it does. It, it releases energy. So you burn more energy. It makes you not want to build muscle because building muscle means now your body requires more calories. So uh -uh, we don't want to do that. It'll encourage fat storage because fat storage is like your insurance, and it can it can lower your libido because throw why your, should I throw your hormone profile off? All of that, yeah, right. So and that's just that's just cortisol, right? Um, why would it lower testosterone? Well, if my body's under a lot of stress, why would it want me to procreate or be driven to procreate? Like let's not let's not make that happen, right? In women, you see other imbalances. Stress is a big one, and I, it's. It will crush your gains if your stress is too high. It would absolutely destroy your body's ability to build muscle or even burn body. Well, and even if you're if you're seeing results in spite of it too, it, it's going to dramatically slow it down. And 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 gains and and uh, bot recomping your body is is a slow process already. Yeah, like it's not an overnight thing to change your body composition. So it's already this long, slow grind to get to your goal as it is. If you throw chronic stress on top of that, you I mean, even just making it 10 or 20 percent worse is a lot. And that and that I think that is I think to be honest with you, I think chronic stress is probably one of the main culprits that causes people to quit because they feel like they're doing the right things because they're reducing calories and they're training their body really hard but then they're not seeing the results yeah. they're not getting they're not getting the return on their investment they feel like they're putting all this work in but what they don't realize is they already have so much chronic stress in their life and they don't recognize that the way they exercise is also considered a stress and the one they're probably choosing is like the worst type of stress for their body considering all the other things they're stressing mm -hmm. and so here they are putting in all this work and i know there's somebody listening right now that could totally relate to this you're sweating your ass off in your work you're, you're consistent four or five days a week all the time you make good food choices and your body just is not changing mm -hmm. and a lot of times the culprit is stress because you are just taking it from all other ends and because we look at exercise and diet as healthy and good for us, you those both can be a stress. Eating in a calorie deficit is a stress. Right. Training your body hella hard is a stress. And if you're adding that on top of a very stressful life, you'll stall the fuck it's out of your results. It's a very strong results. signal. Yes. You know, it's, and it's a defensive signal to your body uh, you know, to preserve things, right, it, it, at all costs. So, uh, you know, sort of in this famine state where, you know, if I'm consuming something, I want to make sure I, I have adequate energy to, to to move forward with. And so, you know, that's a strong signal your body already produces to keep you alive. So, yeah. you know, it is a part of the equation for sure. Yeah, now it is important to to know that stress isn't bad. It's no, no. It's also not good. It's It could be either. And it's essential, right? So they've done studies on quality of life and, and meaning and purpose. And what do they find? When people do things that are more challenging, that cause more stress, for example, have kids, if you decide to have children, you can 100% bet that your stress is going to increase. But you can also, this is according to the literature, bet that your, qual that your sense of meaning and purpose will also increase. So studies will show that stress is essential to a meaningful life. Stress tells your body to improve and strengthen. Not having any stress would make you very weak uh, and uh, you know you, you would be more susceptible to disease. This is why hot, cold contrast, 
oh, my health improves when I do that. Well, you're it's stressing the body and causing it uh, to strengthen. Here's the other thing that we're not considering. How chronic stress, even if it did none of those things. So let's just imagine in a magic world where chronic stress didn't have negative effects physiologically on you. It still affects your behaviors. So you can you will see that when people are chronically stressed, they're more likely to make poor food choices, for example. So I'm more likely to self-medicate with uh, sweet foods or junk food or things that I normally wouldn't choose or alcohol, right? I'm more likely to do those things. Chronic stress is could potentially make me more likely to choose inappropriate exercise for my body. So what I tend to see with clients is people who are chronically stressed will do one of two things with exercise. Either one, they'll choose a form of exercise that's too hard for them. Why? Because that extra cortisol makes them feel better in the moment, right? So the chronically stressed person, they're the most likely to do the spin classes and the orange theory and the circuit type training. Or it makes you not want to do anything. Oh, I can't even think straight. I want to do nothing. And so you're, you're, more, you're, you're less likely to choose appropriate types of workouts for your body. You're more likely to choose foods that are unhealthy, that aren't going to serve your fitness and health goals. So even if chronic stress had no effect on you physiologically, it 100% for sure has an effect on you behaviorally. So what's the key to all of this? I think the key number one is to be aware and then to help to place a little focus on management of stress. And well, all right, what does that look like? Well, you could do things that offset it, like turn off electronics and get off social media. By the way, this is a big one. Like I was talking to, I, was, I can't say who this person was, but I was talking to somebody who this is what they specialize in and they work with people uh, and they work through you know stress. They're like a therapist, right? And they said one of the number one things they do when they work with people who have lots of anxiety and stress, it's an easy first step is, is he says, I tell people to not go on social media and not watch the news just for a couple of weeks just to see how you feel. So that's one stress management uh, strategy. Another one is gratitude. Gratitude, man, that makes a big difference. That's this, huge. this is probably why parents, again, with kids who are more stressed, less time, spend more money. Most parents, if you tell them, hey, would you trade your kids for you know not having them anymore? They'd say no, because they also bring this tremendous amount of gratitude. So it, 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 it reframes all those mm. things and makes them worthwhile and valuable. So I think that's another strategy. Yeah, because right? you can get caught in that loop of just constantly focusing on, you know, either what you don't have or what's not working, and then you just keep reinforcing that same thought process, which then just perpetuates uh, more stress to to be accumulated as a result. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.